My second visit to Gaza was in 2008. I was attending the World Economic Forum Summit in Davos. And uh, at that time, uh, the border was open yani, or broken. Uh, and it just seemed that the uh, Egyptian security and the intelligence allowed it to happen to let Gazan people to come to Sinai and to buy some, some uh, commodity from Egypt. And I was in Davos and I received a phone call from one of my colleagues in, in the organization and he told me, why don't you go and uh, visit Gaza if the border is open? So I traveled from Davos to, I think, Zurich, Zurich, Birmingham. Then on the same day or the following day, I took the Egypt Air, La, uh, Egypt Air uh, uh, flight to Cairo and in the airport there was a car waiting for me to take me straight to uh, uh, Gaza and we arrived to Gaza by 3, 4 o'clock in the morning because the border was open and the Egyptian security allowed everybody to go in and out. It was so cold because it was actually end of January or beginning of February uh, at that time. I entered there to be welcomed by Mr. Mah Dr. Muhammad Sousi, who was the country director of Islamic Relief in Gaza, and we have a plan, clear plan for a few hours, not for the whole day or two days, few hours only, because we were a little bit scared that the borders would be closed at any time. And the plan was actually to visit one of the hospitals, to visit some clinics, to visit the office, and to visit the Islamic University in Gaza at the same time. While I was in the middle of the meeting, I think in the hospital, I received a, a, a note from someone, and in this note it said that Mr. So-and-so, as a top politician, would love to meet with you, and they denied that actually I have received it, and I could not be able to accept this invitation. Why? Because while you are there, every, every inch, every inch you walked inside Gaza being observed by too many security uh, groups, whether from this group or from this side on this side. I said, I'm not in uh, there, I cannot entertain this, and you have not seen me, and I ignored this. This what did not happen to my colleague who came from some Arab countries, who are very happy, very happy to travel, to stay, to relax for a few days till the border were closed. Embarrassing their governments, actually, because they have to send them a special plane to bring them back. Okay, not only that, by sitting there, they have to meet X and Y and Z and take photographs with them. So when they went back to their homeland, without mentioning the countries or the organization, they have a welcome party by the security and they have been given the choice either to close their organization if they decided not to resign or to resign from the board of management. And most of them that I know resigned and actually it's a big mistake. You are in an area been allowed to be there. Why you mix the cards between humanitarian and uh, uh, security, no, not security, and political, alhamdulillah. And we, when we go to this area, of course, the Gazan people now, in 1997, there was still the honeymoon of the Oslo treatment, but now it was a siege around Gaza. Siege around Gaza, and the suffering, and the agony, and the, the burden on the Gazan people was there, you can see it, and we need to do more, we need to do more work, and more work, and more work. The message here, the message is when you are in a very volatile situation like this and decisions of closing or opening the border could be happening in a second like this, don't entertain yourself. Don't behave in a very relaxing atmosphere. That actually, yes, don't even go and see somebody who are not related to the humanitarian work. Why? Why to tarnish your organization? by mixing the political card with the humanitarian card. This is, the behavior is not acceptable. Alhamdulillah, I was not among those people and they came straight before the darkness, as we say, after Maghrib prayer, and straight to, uh, by midnight, I was in Cairo, or after midnight, I was in Cairo. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.